What is zero or no experience? It can mean none, zero, nada. It can also mean that you are a new graduate and you have qualifications, but you do not have any experience. It can also mean that you are making a career change into a different field where you do not have the experience. It could also mean that you have some experience, but you are not able to apply for the job that is asking for, say, five years of experience. So if you are a new graduate, if you are a new immigrant, if you are making a career change, this video is for you. For the best career advice, subscribe to my channel. Click the subscribe button and you'll be notified when I post new videos every week. Hello Goal Inspired Professionals, welcome to my channel. My name is Yvonne Robinson, your career strategist and business coach. I am here to guide you through your career journey to be successful and build a rewarding career. I have landed five high paying jobs in my lifetime with no experience. At the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of what it takes to land a job with zero experience. So keep watching. No matter what anyone tells you, the basic principles of job hunting is not changing. You will still need a comprehensive job searching strategy. So that is the goal that you are having within your comprehensive job searching strategy. And what you do after that is leverage your tools. And one of the tools or two of the tools that you need to have when you are searching for a job with no experience is a resume that is customized to the no experience. Of course, the no experience because we're gonna customize it. It's not the same resume that the person who has lots of experience will use to apply for a job. So we are going to customize your resume and you will need to have an optimized LinkedIn profile. I have already created a video on winning job searching strategies, a comprehensive job searching strategies to land the job and one on winning resume that gets you the job. Those principles do not change. This resume that we are going to create is a winning resume to apply for a job when you have no experience. You should also remember, and you can attribute this to me, that you create your resume for the job that you are looking for, not the job you have. So you create your resume for your future job, not the job that you have. Here are the four steps to getting a job with no experience. Decide on the job you want. List the skills and experience that you have that can be transferred to the job. These are called transferable skills. Recreate your resume, optimize your LinkedIn profile, and you are conducting a comprehensive job searching strategy, which includes networking, using LinkedIn and other tools. And as I said before, all this information is in the comprehensive job searching strategy. There is no certified way to write a resume, but you need to write the resume for different situations. So in this case, you're customizing the resume so that you can apply for a job because you have no experience. First of all, when you're starting a career, whether it's a new one or you're transferring to a new domain, a new career which needs new sets of skills, you need to start somewhere. If you're a new graduate, if you're a new immigrant, if you're transitioning in your career, you need to start somewhere. And at this juncture, I will give a little bit about my own story. And guys, I identify with so many of you that I can tell you different areas in my life where our lives look similar. And I've told this in another video that when I came to Canada, 
I was a lecturer at a university in Jamaica, four and a half years. And when I came to Canada, I had to decide what I wanted to do. I had to decide now what I want to be when I grow up. I did an environmental scan and it was in 2000 and IT business was booming in 2000. Unfortunately, in 2001, the IT sector went bust. But in 2000, that is what everybody was going to do, IT. So I immediately applied to Algonquin College. Otherwise, I would probably have to look for a job right away into a field that I never worked in before and start at the bottom. And luckily I got a placement and that was the start of my IT career. So if you are a new graduate, if you are a new immigrant, you have to decide whether you are gonna go back to school or you're gonna look for a job in the field which you are in. Luckily in these days, information technology is booming and there are certain industries that are booming. So if you're a new immigrant and you are in information technology, in no time you will get a job, but you have to know what strategies you need. If you're transitioning and you have certain skills, you can still get a job, but you need a strategy. So one big takeaway from my story is that you have to do an environmental scan and see the best way or the best place to find yourself in the industry in order to succeed in your career. One takeaway also from my experience is that there are people who are at different levels of their career, whether you're working or whether you're going to start to work. So you have to understand that you should not compare yourself with anyone else because it will be very stressful, right? So it's a mind thing. You should never compare yourself with other people. Worst of all, you're just beginning you should not be comparing yourself with somebody else's middle. There is no certified way to write your resume. But in order to be successful with your resume is that you will need to customize it. There are certain basic principles that you have to follow. And remember, when you're writing your resume, you are not writing your resume for the job that you now have or the job that you had. You are writing your resume for your future job. So let us look at the resume structure. At the top of the resume, you will still have your contact information. And then after that, you're going to have your profile summary, whether you call it profile summary or you call it career summary, it is still the same thing. And then you're going to have your education and training then selected achievements, volunteer experience, skill summary, professional membership, and language competency. When I see a resume and I look after the career summary and I see education and certifications, my first assumption is that you do not have the experience for this job, but you are going to demonstrate that your skills and your training will be able to get you through this job or at least will get you to start this job. So if you are a seasoned professional and you're writing your resume, please do not write the education at the top. Say if you have an MBA or if you have a, in your profile summary, you can say that you have a degree or something like that, a one-liner, but the list should go to the end towards the end of your resume. And if you did not uh, watch my video about the winning resume that gets you the job, that is, if you have a lot of experience, that is the video that you should be watching, okay? But if you're making a transition or if you're leaving school or if you are a new immigrant and you would like to get your foot wet into some different domain or in, into the industry, then this video is for you. So I'm going to focus really on two main areas because you're also going to watch the winning resume that gets you the job because that is the structure. 
that we use we just change it up a bit or the in some of the information that you need for your resume is there but right now in this red in this uh, video we are going to focus on your education and uh, certifications and your profile summary so profile summary let us talk about your profile summary first what are you going to do in this area in order to demonstrate that you can do the job that you're applying for you optimize your profile summary with your greatest attributes, accomplishments, including your transferable skills. And in order to figure out what your transferable skills are, you have to get your skills inventory. I have spoken about creating a master resume in this video up there and linked below and linked above. In order to write your profile summary, since you do not have the experience to do that particular job, you are going to use some words to describe your energy. Instead of saying five years experience as a business analyst, use words that describe your energy. And here are some of the words that you could use. Committed, determined, dedicated, energetic and keen. Those are some of the words that you could use. So instead of saying a business analyst with five years of experience in so-and-so, you could say passionate business analyst who works with cross-functional teams to do X and Y. You are displaying your interest in the job. So you're using high spirited words to describe your energy. Hiring managers, like to work with people or like to hire people who are high energy. So if you do not have a high energy, don't write energetic, find another word. However, if you want to use that word, these traits and skills, soft skills can be learned. So you can learn these soft skills. We were not born with some of these skills. We acquire them because of our environment. So if you would like to learn some of these soft skills, communication skills, and those skills that are transferable, you can also learn them so that when you are applying for jobs, you can truly say that you have great communication skills and you have great teamwork skills and so on. So, so here is a list of transferable skills that you might want to take a screenshot of. Sales, that's a skill telephone skills, communication skills, collaboration and teamwork, customer service, writing skills, organizational skills, policy analysis, retail reports, and problem solving. So there are other notable areas of your resume, for example, language. If you're bilingual French and English and you're coming to Canada, you might want to put that on there and make sure that you say that your competencies, speaking, writing, and reading. So I'm going to put up the two different resumes, the one for winning resume that gets a job and the one for winning resume to get a job with no experience. And you're going to see the differences right now and just uh, take a screenshot of them. They're up on the, the screen. And uh, just to note that you need to structure the resume to highlight your experience when you have experience. And when you don't have the experience, you're highlighting your first, your education. And then you're going to put some notable achievements below. So we're going to talk a little bit about the notable achievements section. You are to make sure that you use transferable skills to describe the work that you have done. Still with selected achievements, if you are a new grad and you did some notable projects in school or you did summer term work or term experience, you should ensure that you write those selected projects where you achieved some experience in your resume because you should list those projects and to describe them to say what your achievements were. Okay, so that is very, very, very important. And there are other areas that I spoke about that you should make sure that you work on in your resume. And if you have volunteer work. If you do not have any volunteer experience and you're applying for a job in a specific field, you should try to get some of those volunteer experience in that field because it also counts for experience. 
And remember, we already know that you do not have a lot of experience for the job that you are applying for. So it's not like you can hide anything. Um, I've uh, seen uh, other persons recommending that you write your resume in a certain way so as, as to hide certain things. Guys, you shouldn't be hiding anything. Be very transparent because we already know that you do not have that experience. What we are looking for is how you are demonstrating what you have to offer. And even people who have a lot of skills do not make it because they do not have the soft skills. They do not have some of the transferable skills. So when you're applying for a job and you're saying, oh, I do not have the experience, you have to ensure that you write the resume in such a way to highlight your greatest attributes so that you can be called in for an interview. And when you go for the interview, you will demonstrate to the hiring manager how you can help them to solve their problems. Hiring managers are busy. They do not have time to waste. So once you send your resume in and you get a call, don't be nervous. But the first step is to get that resume right, okay? So remember, the difference between your resume without the experience and the resume that has the experience is where you put your emphasis and your focus. Selected professional experience goes after profile summary for the person who has lots of experience. The person who doesn't have a lot of experience and you have a lot of education, your education goes after your profile summary and then you're gonna put some selected accomplishments. Okay, so I hope that was helpful today, guys. So while you're here, Remember to watch winning job searching strategies to get you the job and winning resume that gets you the job. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Share with your friends and family. Comment below and let me know what your biggest takeaway is. Let me know what issues you're having and I will respond to each one of you individually. I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.